Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have a question today that came into customer service from Tina B. Great to hear from the ladies out there. Uh, subject is no wrist cock and the 9 o'clock arm position face on. Tina says, I have a question. I have been focusing on not cocking the wrist as per the video, but I noticed that I cannot seem to get the club to 12 o'clock from face on when the arms are at the 9 o'clock position, as you instruct in the video. If I don't cock the wrist a bit, so she's saying she can't get it to where the club is at 12 o'clock, if I had a clock behind us here, 12 o'clock at the 9 o'clock position, which is the arm basically over the toe line where we're starting to go up the tree. Is, if there is no wrist cock as I perceive it, I am about the 11 o'clock position instead of vertical. Is this a problem? Can you expound on this a bit in the daily? Then she goes on to say that, that she's uh, second question would be, I am finally getting my woman's swing right down to a three and sometimes two in practice, but I can't seem to convert that power to my swing with the club in my hands. Suggestion on how to make the transfer. All right, I'll try to remember to make sure I can give you a thought about that one. All right, here's what, here's what Tina's asking. I say there's no wrist cock in a golf swing, all right? Um, whatever I start right here, I'm gonna try to maintain that all the way to the top of the swing, all right? And, and all the way to impact. I do everything I can to not let that forward wrist break, okay? Or change position. Naturally, we know as the forward wrist, which would be the left wrist for a right-hander, goes up, and the right hand, the right hand will couple a little all the way down to where they finally come into impact where they're both, where they're both basically straight out again at impact, all right? So, what Tina's saying is she can get it to here when she gets it to nine o'clock, right? If we got a clock here, if there's a clock back in here, here's 12 o'clock, here's nine o'clock, there's three o'clock, okay? So she's only about, she's only, she only gets it up to about 11, okay? So I think the answer would be is, is watch. If I, if I put, if I create this, put my thumb right here, a thumb on my wrist and, and put this, put my, my middle finger on the shaft and I take it back to here, all right? and I lift my left arm to nine o'clock, the club is at 12 with no problem. If I don't lift my arm quite as much, it's only here 10 to 11. I think it might be just all you need is a fraction more lift, all right? And that, that, it's amazing what that fraction more lift can give you. But again, the big thing about lifting is that we, can on, we only lift as much as we can lift without changing our spine angle, all right? And normally if you, if you're going, if you end up lifting too much, it'll tend to lift your spine up and actually bring you into reverse tilt, and that club might be back here at about one or two o'clock, all right? So I just think it might be just a fraction of a fraction more lift. Now, many times that I think that I see a lot of problems, like uh, with this problem with a lot of golfers, is because they just, they just keep their, their, their trailing arm, the right arm, or their back arm, too close to the body. They, they just don't let it lift enough. They're scared that that's a flying right elbow. As long as you, this, this equilateral triangle that you're seeing here between my arms, as long as both arms lift together, and, and in many cases, I think that's what happens. A lot of golfers get up here and, and they're, they're trying to lift the left, but they're not lifting the right along with it. You have to lift both arms together. I mean, just think about that. If, 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 if there was a tree here and I threw a string over the tree and I came down here and I wrapped it around the club head, and as you started lifting your hands up, I, I, I tied the string nice and tight and right as you start lifting, as you start to move this club, I just pull the string down really tight. And if you keep both hands on the club, they're both going up together, all right? But I think a lot of golfers end up having a problem because, because they, they, let this, they let the base of their equilateral triangle with the trailing arm, the right arm for a right-hander, doesn't lift equally to the right, to the left arm going up because they're scared that this is a flying right angle, a flying right elbow. It's not. A flying right elbow is only flying when you, when you raise the elbow high enough. Now, see where it's at right here? When the elbow is starting to get real close to the hand, and you see the, you see the, you can feel yourself, or looking at somebody else, you can see that their, their, the upper arm is raising the shoulder socket. That's flying. As long as the elbow is, as long as the, the, the upper arm is down, and the elbow and the, the shoulder stays lifts normally, which would be what you do is you throw. Nobody's going to throw a ball like this and come out of it because now you just set to, to throw the ball down, or you're going to have to, you know straight down in the ground and you're going to have to reroute it <laughs> and that'll, who knows where that's going to throw over there. Same thing would happen with a golf swing. Just lift it normal. You're going to serve a tennis racket. You throw it up, you just lift your arm here. You don't ever lift your arm up there because things get out of whack. So this is not a flying right elbow. That is. And normally if you fly your elbow, it's going to have, your, 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 your right thumb 
the bottom hand thumb will, will start to come off at the top and you're going to start to feel the club face going that way. As long as you're keeping it, you feel everything staying together, the, 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 the thumb is resting on the hand, staying on the hand, just lift that both arms equally at the same speed, to the same height, then they'll drop together when you transition. But lift them together and just make sure that, that your spine stays the same. The whole key is lift as far as you can go without changing your spine. And as far as you can go where, where you're keeping the three-quarter swing. All right, so I think it's probably just a little bit more arm lift. All right, the second point that Tina's asking is she has a swing right. That's a training get machine that, that when you find your number, it's going to click. It's going to fire. It's got a little, it's got, I don't have one out here with me, but it, it's, uh, it's got a thing. You, you, uh, uh, like, like a washer, you pull it down, it's locked in, and when you swing it, it fires. All right, and it clicks. And, and, and if you swing at the right time and, and create acceleration, it should click right about at impact. Uh, we can achieve the same thing with, with, uh, with those little those fine sticks that we all play with and uh, that we have in our bag for alignment. And I mean, I just got one of my arrows, but I think I can make this thing swish. All right, now we don't want it swishing up here. It should start swishing just about one fraction of a second before impact. Okay, so I think the problem is is that the swing right, as well as this, is very short compared to your golf clubs. And so I think it's easier for you to stand here and, 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 and swing it nice and vertical and get a speed with it. But when you put your longer clubs into your hand, I think the length of those clubs and the difference of the weight of the head at the end of the club versus that little round, that little round piece on the end of, on the end of your, that swing right, uh, that changes the feeling of the swing. And I just think that there's a good probability that, that you're, just, you're just not with the longer club and the weight of it, you're not accelerating it as fast as you, that you can with the shorter swing right. And I, I think it's like so many of you can take, can take a wedge and, 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 and really swing that fast because it's shorter and more vertical, but as the clubs get longer, it's harder, to, it's harder to accelerate them as they're longer and flatter. And so that's something you have to really work on and trying to learn and feel the exact amount of, you know, how you, how you get at the top and how you, 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 you accelerate your hands. I, tell you, I like to call it snap, crackle, pop the impact. Snap it. Boom, crackle, pop, and it goes. And, and, and just really learn what your normal acceleration is and how much more energy, and, and, and we'll even say strengthen your hands, your forearms, and your, your neck, back, and shoulders, and even your legs, how you have to apply more energy to accelerate the longer golf clubs. And I, I think I look at that because that's the one thing I see with, with a lot of ladies and, and a lot of seniors. They just get into, they get into more of a monotone or a monospeed swing. And, 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 and they, and they got this concept that they want to have good tempo. Well, a good tempo, as far as the forward upswing goes, is acceleration. I'm going to swing the club. The club does not swing me. It's not trying to stay and keep a nice steady tempo because that is not acceleration. All right, so it's one of those two things. And, and very likely, uh, once you get over this thought about a smooth, constant tempo, the key now is, is to know that as clubs get longer, you've got to put a little bit more energy into it because it's a longer, heavier, and a club, and, and, it's, and being flatter, it's, 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 centrifugal force isn't quite helping you as much as, say, a pitching wedge or a sand wedge. And so, therefore, you have to supply the extra energy to accelerate that thing, to get that swoosh down there at impact with that club accelerating through impact because, as we know, it's on, 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 square, solid, accelerating through impact is how you, how you really get the power. Okay, two good questions from Tina. And, and uh, it's great to hear from a lady. I'd like to hear from a lot more of you. Let us know what, what's on your mind and how we can help you. Send any, any questions to the to our customer service, and we'll try to get them up on dailies. All right, so for today on accelerating the club and making sure that both arms equal, lift equally, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.